Hey there everyone, welcome back to Factolic. Today we delve into a different fandom than we've done before, the Buffyverse. Personally, I'm a huge fan of Buffy. Angel was pretty decent too, until they offed Cordelia at least. But that's more of a personal rant, I suppose. Anyway, we know you love our kaiju videos and we love making them for you, but prepare yourselves as we mix things up a bit in the coming weeks to add a little more flavor from some other tasty topics. So today, we offer the 10 best villains, or would that be worst villains, from the Buffyverse. Number 10. The Gentleman The Season 4 episode Hush was infamously known among most Buffy fans as creator Joss Whedon's response to critics' opinions that he only knows how to write witty and snarky dialogue. As if giving a big middle finger to everyone, Joss wrote a mostly dialogue-free episode that ironically resulted in an Emmy nomination for outstanding writing for a drama series. In the episode, we're introduced to the gentlemen, a group of fairy tale ghouls that come to Sunnydale and steal everyone's voices. This made it much easier for the gentlemen to covertly cut out their victims' hearts, a visual that will stick with you for the rest of your life. While being the only monsters on this list to appear in just one episode, the horror of their appearance just look at that disturbing smile, gives the gentleman a special distinction when discussing Buffy's rogues gallery. The role of the main gentleman was notably played by Doug Jones of Hellboy fame. Number 9. Caleb Season 7 of Buffy was made all the better with the late addition of Whedonverse alum Nathan Fillion, known best at the time as Captain Mal Reynolds on Whedon's tragically short-lived series Firefly. Fans were excited to watch their favorite space cowboy trade quips with Buffy and the rest of the Scoobies. However, what the fans were not expecting was that the character of Caleb was an overpowered misogynist imbued with the powers of the first evil. More on that later. He gave Buffy and Faith a substantial thrashing upon their first meeting, even going as far as to blind poor Xander in one eye, leaving him to wear an eye patch through the rest of the character's existence. Although the character only makes a handful of appearances, finally being killed by Buffy one episode before the series finale, he remains a fan favorite villain. Number 8. Glory, aka Glorificus. The big bad of Buffy Season 5 was conceptualized as someone who could match the titular hero on all levels. In short, she was another super powered petite blonde that could throw sarcasm around with the best of them. At first, it seemed that we were just dealing with another monster that could be easily dispatched by the end of the season, but it was later revealed that Glory was actually a hell god known as Glorificus. She was so powerful that the only way to dilute her power was to have her essence placed in the body of a mortal, an unassuming and average med student named Ben. Glory proves her power many times over, most notably spending days torturing Spike and scrambling Tara's brain in one of the most tension-filled scenes of the entire season, which led to our first glimpse of what would eventually become Dark Willow. But we can't get into all of the specifics of the various and frankly convoluted plot points that Glory was involved in. It's very important to note that her presence not only ushered in the introduction of new characters that fans will forever debate the need for, looking at you, Dawn, it also gave us glimpses into the darker nature of some of your favorite characters. You'll never look at Giles the same way. Well, not always looked back on fondly by fans due to the lackluster response to Season 5 in general, Glory's impact cannot be understated. Number 7. Holtz Captain Daniel Holtz made his debut during a few flashback seasons in early Season 3. Holtz was depicted as a reluctant demon hunter during the 18th century, being shown as a Van Helsing-type character, only way more brutal. As we're introduced to the character, we're shown how Angelus and his sire slash lover slash betrayer slash lover again, Darla, killed Holtz's family just for laughs. A devastated Holtz makes a deal with the demon Sajon to be put in stasis until he arises in 2001 to complete his revenge, only to find that Angelus is now the prophetic vampire with a soul, Angel, and Darla is pregnant? After Darla gives birth to hers and Angel's son, Connor, Holtz convinces Wesley, of all people, that Angel will one day kill Connor. In an insanely boneheaded move, 
Wesley kidnaps Connor and hands him over to Holtz, only to get his throat cut for his efforts. Holtz then escapes with Connor into a demon dimension. Unsurprisingly, this sends Angel on a downward spiral where the lines between him and Angelus – don't worry, we'll get there – gets a little blurry. Holtz stands out among Angel's rogues gallery not only because of his impact on pretty much all of the series arcs from that point forward, but also because he's one of the only human villains in the Buffyverse that's able to cause absolute bedlam with little to no supernatural influence. Number 6. The First The first evil, or the first if brevity is your thing, makes its first impact on the world of Buffy the Vampire Slayer as Villain of the Week in Season 3 episode Amends. In the episode, the first tries to convince Angel that his only means of, well, amends for the rampages of his alter ego Angelus was for him to commit suicide. The first then comes back in a major way as the main big bad of Buffy's final season. Nothing is known about the first other than it's not corporal, which means it has no physical form and has to fight using the physical forms of its minions and worshippers. The first is believed to be the source of all evil hence the super expository name. Not only does the first leave a trail of bodies in its wake, but then it outdoes itself by dressing up as the ghost of the people it's killed, just for that extra twist of the knife. The ultimate goal of the first is to open the hellmouth that exists under the library of Sunnydale High and overrun the world with demons. The first is heroically thwarted by not only Buffy and the Scooby Gang, but by an army of potential slayers that were permanently imbued by Willow with the power of the Chosen One. The first distinction among Buffy's main villains is that, while trying to defeat it, the tradition of there only being one Slayer at a time gets turned on its head with ramifications felt in the Season 8 comics extension of the series. Number 5. Dark Willow Willow Rosenberg probably doesn't need much of an introduction at this point. Portrayed by Allison Hannigan, Willow was a favorite of fans from all walks of life, but holds a special place in the hearts of many gay Buffy fans who were hard-pressed to find characters like themselves represented in the media at the time. Willow's transformation into the overpowered uber-witch Dark Willow was helped along by the actions of Season 6 protagonist Warren Mears. In the episode Seeing Red, after a defeat at the hands of Buffy, Warren tries to even the score by attempting to shoot Buffy in her backyard. Tragically, he almost succeeds in killing Buffy, but a stray bullet makes its way inside the house, hitting Tara and killing her almost instantly. Fueled by rage and an addiction to magic, Willow begins wreaking havoc on anyone that has the slightest connection to Tara's death, including removing all of Warren's skin. Not satisfied with just killing Warren, Dark Willow nearly kills both Giles and Anya before turning her attention on destroying the rest of the world. Unlike most of the villains on this list, Dark Willow only appears fully formed in a total of three episodes, but her impact both before and after her turn to the dark side earns her a place on this list. Number 4. Warren Mears Just the mention of Season 6 villain Warren Mears will make even the most casual fans of the Buffyverse groan in disapproval. Don't let his oafishness and general buffoonery fool you. Warren is evil. Let's run down the list of his misdeeds in no particular order, shall we? He betrayed his friends and partners, built a sentient sex robot with a personality and then abandoned it, kidnapped his ex-girlfriend and turned her into a mindless sex slave before bashing her head in as she tried to escape, robbed a museum, made Buffy invisible which almost led to her breaking down on a molecular level, and last but not least, killed Tara while trying to murder Buffy. That's not even including all the mischief him and Amy the Witch got into in the show's comic book continuation. So, long story, Warren sucks. Number 3. The Senior Partners The Senior Partners stand out on this list due to the fact that, during the course of the show, Angel, we never actually get to see them. They have no true corporal form, or at least none that the human mind can comprehend. They're mentioned consistently by name almost from the get-go. But are primarily an influencing force. They work ominously through the interdimensional law firm Wolfram & Hart, whose job it is to look out for their interests on the mortal plane. If all that sounds vague, congratulations! You know as much as the rest of us. 
What does make them stick out among the entire rogues gallery of the Buffyverse is that they're always there, working their influences both directly and indirectly. They're behind pretty much every bad thing that's happened to Angel Investigations. Their ominous presence cannot be ignored. Number 2. Mayor Richard Wilkins During Season 2 of Buffy, there would be whispers among the characters of how the mayor would react to some of the monster-related events happening in Sunnydale. This gave the foreboding feeling that the elected leader of Sunnydale was not only evil himself but a bit of a hard-ass as an authority figure. Fast forward to our first introduction to Mayor Richard Wilkins III in Season 3, which caused many of us to scratch our heads in wonder. Was this the guy that we built up to be afraid of? He's so… wholesome, I wish my dad was more like him. As it turns out, the Richard Wilkins that we're introduced to is over a century old and the original founder of Sunnydale. Needless to say, there is more to the mayor than meets the eye. A lot more. Turns from a human into a giant snake more. Wilkins' influence is felt most when looking at the overall character arc of Faith, the other, other vampire slayer. His influence is single-handedly responsible for turning Faith into the evil slayer, the cane to Buffy's able as one evil preacher once pointed out. Even though he was defeated by the entire graduating class of Sunnydale at the end of Season 3, his presence looms over every decision that Faith makes. Number 1. Angelus Could number 1 have gone to anyone else? Angelus's evil deeds are so numerous that we could dedicate an entire video to just talking about all the despicable things he's done. The mere mention of the name Angelus will send a chill down the spine of both the good and evil alike. During Season 1 and the first part of Season 2 of Buffy, we were teased mercilessly by Whedon at the possibility of an evil version of Angel. When we finally were able to witness the sheer brutality of Angelus in the flesh, we were not disappointed. It's important to note here that while Angelus tops our list, Angel does not, since it's since been determined that Angelus is a completely separate personality. The only way to bring Angelus forth is to remove the soul from Angel or render his soul useless. While Angelus pops up in person only about three times throughout the course of both shows, he leaves an impact every time. His shadow looms over every single thing Buffy-related, leaving the largest mark on the Buffyverse as whole. So there you have it. What did you think of that list? Would you have done it differently? We'd love to know in the comments section below. Also, what fandom would you like to see Factolic cover? Until next time, stay safe.